So I hear a lot of people talk about different ways to fix the economy, but what I have noticed is uh, there is an easy misinterpretation of how different the number one billion is from a million. Now, a lot of people seem to think that a million is a lot and that a billion is kind of like a million, but better somehow. However, I want to illustrate that if you were to put a billion on a bar graph and you put a million on the same bar graph, the million will be virtually uh, invisible. It will be just hair thin at the bottom of that bar graph. And anything significantly less than a million will not even be enough to be visually represented on the same bar graph that a billion is on. So let's play with some numbers. Now, let's say you want to understand how many months rent. Oh, whoops, hold on. How many months rent? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't give me this. Here we go. So let's say that our rent is 1200 a month, right? That's one, two, zero, zero. Uh, what we want to do is plug in 1 million, so that's 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, we've got two commas in there. We divide that by the 1, 2, 0, 0. Uh, the number that we get is 833. That means 1 million would pay 833 months of rent. Uh, well, we know that there are 12 months in a year, so we divide that by 12. And now we get 69.444 repeating. So that's how many years of rent 1 million would pay. Now let's do that same thing, but looking at 1 billion. So we go 1, followed by nine zeros. We have three commas in there. Now we divide that by 1, 2, 0, 0. And what we get is, you know, 833,333 uh, repeating. So we want to know how many years that is, because that's how many months right there. So now we divide it by 12 again. Now it's 69,444.444 you know, repeating. So this is an incomprehensible amount of months, so or years rather. So if we want to convert this into years, and we want to say how, ask how many lifetimes this number would be paying the rent through, um, if we assume that oh yeah, this is years, Jesus Christ. So if we assume that there are 90 years in a lifetime, we then divide this by 90, right? And now we're getting to 771.604 and then some. So this means for 771 90 year lifetimes, you could pay your rent with a billion. Whereas you are looking at roughly 70 years with 1 million. That's how starkly different these these are it's orders of magnitude different so the next time you come across a uh, an, an expense I want you to understand the difference and I want you to just plug that unplanned expense into this sort of same idea so let's say uh, you have to get your transmission fixed and you're like, uh, crap, my mechanic told me it would be $2,000. Let's see just how much 1 million would pay. So let's see how many times you could get your transmission fixed for a million, right? So we have one followed by six zeros divided by two followed by three zeros and 1 million would pay for that expense 500 times. So if we want to do that again, but with 1 billion, that's again 1 followed by 9 zeros, and then we divide that by the 
2,000 that we were talking about for the expense, we are looking at 500,000 times. So the reason it's important to know this when we're talking about economics and how to fix the disparity of uh, human rights that people have based on their economic standing is there's a misconception that uh, people on food stamps or people on disability are sort of milking the system and that's why there's not enough to go around. It needs to be abundantly clear and I really need you and everybody who could be listening to this to understand fully how little it makes a difference if someone is on $150 a month on food stamps, right? Because when we're looking at record profits for corporations and they are saying numbers like, you know, $118 billion, uh, those profits, that's, that's profits. That's not their total income. That's the amount that has exceeded the costs. So after they've paid all their employees, after they've purchased all their stuff wholesale, after they've built stores, settled out of court for their human rights violations, after their mar mar uh, marketing budget and advertising, that's how much money they're walking away with. Right? So... Let's say you're upset that uh, someone is on disability and they're making 600 a month on that, right? So we'll do 118 billion. So that's 118 followed by nine zeros. And let's uh, divide that by, well, I say 600. We'll say the 600 a month that, that person is taking. So we divide that by 600 the amount of months that that company could have paid that one person's disability alone would have been 196,666,666.66 repeating. So when we are looking at this, and this isn't to you know, say that uh, businesses are necessarily responsible for the disability or the food stamps or whatever of every everything, you need to understand that places like Amazon, Starbucks, Walmart, they don't pay their employees enough for them to not be on some of these uh, public assistance programs. So my question, and I hope the question that you ask anyone who mentions things like welfare queens or people who are pretending to be on disability or whatever is why is it my tax dollars and your tax dollars subsidizing the employees of a company that is making so much they could have paid for 196 and then some million people to have that that amount per month because the fact is when we're when we're talking about the disparity of wealth and how there doesn't seem to be enough resources and there are so many people living paycheck to paycheck uh no one on disability is your enemy no one on medicaid no one on anything is your issue because even if we're saying that 600 a month, right? So 600 times 12, because there are 12 months in a year, that $7,200 that was going to that one person, again, if we put this on the bar graph, it isn't visually represented. It would literally be so insignificant and so small that there wouldn't be a pixel showing that amount. It would be totally immaterial compared to a bar graph that has a billion displayed. But I, I hope that this is helpful. We can play with more numbers. Uh, it's just, I need people to understand. When we talk about the ways that we can fix economics, anyone who's struggling at all does not have enough wealth to displace 
anyone. All right. So it's it's not illegal immigrants working under the table. They don't have enough of an effect on the economy to make it so that the people who are legally working can't afford to get by. The fact is that uh, the disparity of corporate profits versus the wages paid down is so starkly different that it is an example every year of a transfer of wealth from the labor class to the asset owning class. And this is a problem specifically because we live in a world where uh, human rights and human needs have been commodified for profit. So you have to be able to buy human rights to have them. They aren't rights, they're privileges with a price tag. And I need people to understand that anyone you've seen economically struggling has never had the impact, has never taken enough, uh, an, enough income to have displaced another struggling family, period. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I hope, you know, this will be useful in future conversations when you hear people make these strange claims because these claims are specifically a propagandized tool to make the people, the working class, feel like they're at odds with each other when no one else who's going to work or even on disability or whatever, nobody who's in your neighborhood likely has ever taken enough from any assistance program or uh, from an employment opportunity where they're trading labor for money has ever really economically displaced anyone because their, their piece of that pie is so invisible compared to the corporations that are boasting of these record profits. That's the problem. If a company has that much transfer of wealth every year and they are hoarding it, that means that that's less in circulation to meet the basic needs of humans within that system. Have a good day.